Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be talking about the uh, AMD bulldozer processors. I don't necessarily have one in um, yet, but I will be getting it soon, probably in about another month or so. I did, however, just ordered a new motherboard, and I'll talk a little bit about that and why I chose that particular motherboard as well as some of uh, the other motherboards I was considering. But essentially, uh, AMD is releasing, or had just released, four new processors, um, and two of those are eight cores. One of them is 6-core and the other one's of quad-core. Um, it's the FX series and um, it's one of their you know high-performance um, lineup of processors. And so the ones that they released here are the uh, 8150, which is the highest end, the 8120, um, the 6100, and a 4100, right? So uh, the 8... Uh, 1000 series indicates the 8 cores, the 6000 series is a 6 core, and the 4000 series is a 4 core. Uh, pretty easy to distinguish uh, all of them. And the FX series basically means it's their enthusiast line, and it means that all of the multipliers are unlocked, so you can uh, easily unlock, um, overclock uh, uh, with those processors, the FX series. Right, so right now all I have is the uh, X Phenom 2 X6. Uh, I think it's the 1100T. Yeah, I think that's what I have. I'll have to look. Anyways, um, so this right here, these processors are uh, eight cores, but it's sort of not physically fully eight cores, so to speak. And here's a sort of uh, schematic uh, by an Antec, a really great. Um, uh, illustration here and it's essentially uh, eight integer cores what they call them and they share a floating point uh, core and uh, not to get too technical because even I don't know really know the super technical parts of it but you can sort of think of it as two cores and uh, sharing one um, floating point so the two cores kind of pipes things through the floating point and uh, it'd be better if uh, each uh, core had its own floating point um, uh, I guess sort of scheduler I guess they call it um, but so essentially when they share the single a single floating point um, instead of both uh, processors uh, piping things through so you gotta think of it as like a, like a pipe. Um, each processor piping things through into its own floating point. Rather, it's sharing one single floating point. So you don't get a one-to-one -one ratio per integer core here. Instead, um, they, I guess, a lot of people have calculated it out to be more of a um, for the two. Um, integer cores you get uh, going through a floating point you get about 1.6 or 1.65 coming out of that floating point so it's not exactly um, a one-to-one -one ratio or essentially a two-to-two -two ratio two processors um, with two uh, floating point um, um, pipes uh, to handle the, each one of those processors it's more like a two-to-one and then y y you get a uh, 1.6 uh, sort of ratio out of there, but nonetheless, um, it's still a, a, a pretty good processor, and uh, they are um, comparing it to a lot of the um, Core i5s uh, from uh, Intel, the Intel Sandy Bridge Core i5 2500s, right? Um, but uh, for my particular applications, I would like to be using um, this for for uh, server and um, virtual machines. So I want to run a lot of virtual machines. I want to have a machine that runs like uh, some Ubuntu, some Backtrack, some uh, Windows 8, Windows 7, various Windows 7s, um, and even uh, uh, Windows Server. Right. So that's what I plan on using it for. Also, it's going to be uh, sort of a LAN party rig for me. Um, and hopefully I can explain more of that once I actually have that stuff in and I'm showing you the build. But anyways, um, this is to be, I'm going to be upgrading my um, my AM3 um, motherboard that I got. I've got another video if you want to check that out. I'm going to be upgrading that motherboard. And so uh, these are the processors that we're releasing. And I'm going to try to get the AMD FX8120, right? That's the one that I want to get. 
Um, I don't want to necessarily get the highest end one, mainly because I want to overclock this 8120 to either be equal to or surpass the 8150. And here's the price points um, that uh, it should be coming out. Right, and so uh, some of the features is that the uh, turbo core, which basically kind of overclocks itself, so like um, like uh, let's say for example the 8120 here stock is 3.1 and it'll overclock itself to uh, 3.4 and max out at 4.0. I don't know if it does that to all the cores, <coughs> but um, um, that's one of a, a, a neat feature. Uh, but I plan on hopefully starting right off the bat to overclock it to 4.0 gigahertz, right? And um, 125 watts, um, the TDP is what it's running at. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it on the uh, CPU lineup that's coming out. Now, on to the motherboards that I am uh, plan on getting. This all started with reading this uh, article on Maximum PC about this particular motherboard, um, the Asus M5A99X Evo. They got a really good review on this motherboard. Um, but if you notice here, there's two uh, motherboards that are coming out, or two chipsets um, for the 990X series. Um, the one is the 990X and then the 990FX. And the 990FX is more of the enthusiast um, chipset. And the 990X is for the, I guess, more of the mainstream. Um, both are very good motherboards, right? But I'll tell you a little bit about the difference. So uh, I read the article on this particular motherboard, and I was considering on getting it. And the best price that I can get here on Amazon is 150 bucks. Um, and then I compared it to another uh, brand that I like, which is Gigabyte. And um, this is also a 990X. Pay no attention to this A here. That's just. Um, Gigabyte's own branding, but it's essentially a 990X here. And uh, I saw this a little while ago uh, for 140 bucks, 139.99 with a uh, free ship. And um, both boards are are pretty good. I would have went with the uh, Gigabyte one, but I didn't go with that. Instead, I went with the uh, Gigabyte 990FX UD3. Right, so this is more of a enthusiast board, and it's a uh, I guess the starting lineup for the FX series with Gigabyte, right? And so uh, I found this for one hundred forty-five dollars um, free ship, and uh, with Amazon Prime, and so you know comparing it to the uh, Asus board, which is five bucks more, I'd rather go for the nine ninety FX. And the two main difference, or the one main difference between um, the 990FX and the 990X is that the um, FX series PCI Express slots uh, run at uh, 16x uh, when you have two cards inside, right? So if you run two cards at Crossfire um, on the 990FX, both cards will run at full 16 speed um, connection, and so the uh, 990 series doesn't do that, uh, the 990X. The 990X instead it has uh, one, uh, the main slot is 16X, but if you put in another card um, and run that in Crossfire it's only going to run at 8X, so it's 16 and 8X. So that's one thing that you should consider. Both have uh, SATA 6 gigs, uh, 6 gigabit, but you should check with the motherboard manufacturer if you go with like MSI or ASRock. Um, not all of them have uh, 6 SATA ports with 6 gigabits. Not that I have 6 hard drives with uh, 6 gigabits, but it's good to have, you know, later on down the line to have um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, SATA 6 gigabit ports and this one has six of them. Intel, they only have two of them on there but uh, the the AMD motherboards here, the 990 series have six of them, right? But then again, make sure you check to make sure that uh, it has six of them and they indicate it right down here, six SATA 6 gigabit ports, right? Um, all right, so out of uh, these three, uh, if you want to, you know, go budget friendly, um, then I recommend the uh, Gigabyte 990X because you can get it for 140 bucks. But f I mean, for five dollars more, 
you've got the 990FX series, right? And you can overclock a little bit harder, I think, um, with the starting with the UD3 series. So the next motherboard above the UD3 would be the UD5 in the Gigabyte series. And um, it's a little bit more, and essentially it's the same set of features, but uh, I think they use like um, higher quality capacitors for some hardcore serious overclocking that you want to do. Um, so that's something if you want to go above the $150 range, here's the next uh, iteration up. And then above that, um, over oh, the uh, Asus side, um, is uh, their FX series. They make one um, called the Sabertooth, and it's you know, with tough, uh, tough series, TUF, and then tough capacitors and um, thermal radar, thermal detection, all kinds of fancy bells and whistles here for 190 bucks. If you want to get into some serious overclocking, that's the way to go. Um, and then Gigabyte's got their higher end one with the UD7 um, line, and uh, that's uh, above the 200 mark, and that's some serious stuff there. Um, and then the Asus uh, Crosshair V Formula, Republic of Gamers. This is a serious, serious overclocking gaming machines. And if uh, you're going to get into this, you probably don't need any of my videos. And so hopefully my next video uh, about this is uh, doing a uh, motherboard swap. And I'm getting this because my dumbass um, in my other video... I uh, got the wrong motherboard for the CPU. The motherboard that I got was a 95 watt motherboard. It supports processors up to 95 watts and the 6 core processor I have is of course 125 watts. Although it worked um, and it works at 100% I couldn't overclock it so I was having problems overclocking it and thankfully someone pointed out on uh, YouTube that I'm using the wrong motherboard uh, for the wrong processor and that the CDP was um, was both different. So thank you for that, um, YouTube a subscriber. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I got to, to say about this for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. Um, my videos. Um, I'll talk to you later. Peace.